How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I'm going to walk you through how to make a foundation for your shed. Now the shed I'm building is an 8 by 12 and it's actually a kit from Home Depot but this is going to be valid whether you have a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 16 you can still do the same approach. Now if time and money were no object I'm sure we'd all just pour a concrete pad but in many of our situations we want something that we can put in fairly quick and also isn't going to break the bank. So at a cost of $150 this is going to provide a level and secure foundation for my shed. So let's jump into and I'll show you how I actually located this spot before I started the digging. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this. I wanted to reference the detached garage and make sure the back of the shed was right in line with the back of this detached garage. So I just put a stake in place and I'll bring a string over to the location of the shed. I'm using the perimeter of the floor, the two by fours here, eight foot by 12 foot, to serve as where that shed will lay out. Now I'm just taking two measurements at the detached garage and when those measurements are exactly the same, I know that line is perfectly parallel and coming off, which I can use as a reference for the perimeter boards I have here for my shed. So I'll just shift those over slightly and I'll know everything is lined up. So you'll see here in a second, I'm gonna have three four by four skids actually running underneath the floor here. So what I'm gonna do is take these wood stakes. I like the positioning here of the end of my shed. So I'm going to get the stakes in the right spot and then go ahead and drive those into the ground. And then these will be positioning for when I bring those skids in to locate my concrete blocks. I'll have my end point and positioning for the three skids here. So I'm gonna come in one foot from this side, one foot from this side, and then also position one right in the middle, which would be four feet from either side. That will be the positioning of those skids. So we'll take our measurements. There's the one foot, the four foot, and one foot from the other side. Just start knocking the stakes in. They don't have to go too deep, but just like any project, you will run into some snags like I did here on the third stake. Try to metal one to see if I could poke through thinking it was a tree root. It was not. It looked like a piece of concrete. So I got out a big negotiator here and got the chunk out so I could move everything back in place, line it up, check my measurements, making sure I'm still aligned, and then setting that third stake in place. So now with the back of the shed position, and really I'm not fully squaring up my floor yet. We still have to do all of our joists and a lot more work. Now I just want a really good reference but to make sure that the side walls are square to the back surface, we're just gonna use what's called a three, four, five triangle. So go ahead and measure three feet off of our corner here. And then go ahead and do a four foot side, which we already have marked with the stake. And now I can use that as a reference to measure the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse here, I'll put a nail in, the hypotenuse should be five feet exactly. If it is not, we might have to adjust those sidewalls a little bit to get that to a perfect five feet. And then that makes sure that that corner is a right angle and everything is set correctly. So I'm just a little bit off and what I need is that wall to go that direction slightly. So I'll make a little bit of adjustments, we'll remeasure, and then see if we can't get everything squared up. Okay, small adjustment made. We'll use that nail. Use that nail to hook our the end of our tape measure. And now we got right at five feet. Okay, so now I know back wall is good. And then we have a nice 90 degree here. If you wanted to, you also could measure your diagonals. But again, I'm just locating my three skids right now. So we can find the actual areas that we need to dig out for our concrete blocks. So I will do the diagonals once we actually do the floor. Right now it's good enough for doing the locating on our skids. So it should be pretty easy. We're just replicating for this side and then we'll have each end point for the three different four by four skids. And we'll be able to lay those out and start locating our concrete pads. So what I'll do is just temporarily place each pad, all nine in place, use a four by four skid to get those exactly where I want them and then use marking paint to put an outline three inches around that. So a little bit larger than each of the pads. I'm not digging down much. All I'm doing is removing the sod here 
So once the sod's removed, I'll be able to tamp down the dirt and then add in the gravel prior to the blocks. So now we have the nine locations for our concrete pads that'll have the three four by four posts running here and then that'll really support our floor system. But now we need to level everything up. What I'm using is I do have a laser level here that's setting a parallel plane that I can reference. So that plane, and you can't really see it very well because it's still a little bit bright out, but that plane right now is reading to the ground right here. It is 38 and a quarter off the ground. So 38 inches and one quarter off of the ground. So you'll kind of pick your highest spot. And for me, it is, it is right here. So 37 and three quarters, I think that is my high spot. So then I'll go to some of my low spots and cross reference. Now I'm reading out 40 inches. So that means from the 37 and three quarters to 40 inches, I'm gonna have two and a quarter inches of elevation change between these two spots. So we're gonna to need to make up that difference because I want the four by four post to clear this highest spot. So I want my surface here to be at least that high and actually just a little bit higher because I want the post to be off the ground so they're not soaking up any moisture and it extends out the life of the skids and the overall floor system. So I'm gonna build this one up here, the first one, and we'll kind of show a focus in view of that, putting down the gravel, tamping it down, leveling everything out with the torpedo level, and then getting that in place where it is actually higher than the ground surface here. So I'm probably gonna to go to about 37 inches or maybe 37 and a half inches to make sure once that four by four post is on this concrete pad, and then level across that it's clearing all the grass, clearing all the mud, and we won't have any moisture issues. And then we'll continue to reference and build everything up. Just remember, these pads are about an inch and a half thick. They're called eight inches by 16 inches by two inches, but they're only about an inch and a half thick. So you can stack multiple concrete pads on top of each other, opposed to having to build that up with gravel. So just keep that in mind when you have the lower sides and you really have to build up, you can stack multiple concrete pads uh, on top of each other. And like everything else, you'll find links in the description for your reference, so you can reference those for your own projects. Let's go ahead and start this one as a reference, get it all leveled up, and then start working on all the rest of our eight pads. So it'll take you multiple iterations at each of these pad locations. You want to get the right elevation, but also use that torpedo level to make sure it's level in both directions. Once I get three in a row, I'll put the skid and then check with the four foot bubble level just to make sure everything is level and confirmed. Once I get multiple skids in place, I will also be able to check across both of those, confirming that front to back, left to right, we're all leveled out. So I'll finish off here with our last three pads. Again, you can use multiple blocks to save yourself a little time opposed to piling a bunch of gravel in that hole. Then once we get that, we'll go ahead and get the last skid to finish things off. So with all the skids set, now I have my floor also in place. And I was able to check level on multiple locations, both on the front, which looks good, and also over on the side. And overall, everything is looking great. Now just note, I am gonna use some hurricane straps to tie this floor down to those three skids, 12 total straps. Now there's a lot of different options when it comes to foundations for your sheds. And we are just kicking off a completely new channel called Everyday Shed, where Carlos is gonna be over there going through 
all the different aspects of sheds and many, many, many different designs. So you can choose the one that fits your own needs. So you can check out this video right here and it's kind of the next level up when it comes to foundations. It's gonna take a little bit more time, a little bit more money, but it is a little bit more secure and a better foundation for your shed. Now, if you wanna see this Home Depot kit, it's about $2,000, eight foot by 12 foot. I'm gonna do the complete build and finish this guy off. Check out this video right down here. And I'll also include all the different modifications I made made to this kit to make it a little bit better. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.